Be sure to check out all of our interviews at athletesangle.com, where you can also find the podcast from all of our past episodes, as well as blogs about the show, including Take 5. We talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. I don't really think that me breaking Jerry Rice's record was special. Um, I think shutting you guys up is really what made it special. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Athletes Angle here on 101.5. We are joined now by Edmonton Oil King Center, Michael St. Croix. Michael, first off, the Under-17 tournament was going on in Winnipeg this last week. You played in the last two tournaments for Team Canada West in 2009 in Port Alberni and in 2010 in Timmins, Ontario. Walk us through what those experiences were like for you. Oh, they're amazing experiences. I mean, you uh, anytime you get to wear the Canadian flag on your... Uh, Jersey, I mean, it's a dream come true. It's something you thought about ever since you're a little kid. So, uh, being able to get that opportunity twice was uh, definitely a dream come true. And unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, come up with any medals. But uh, you know, it's, it's a great experience. Meet a lot of good fr- new friends and uh, you know, good hockey uh, hockey minds. So, uh, you know, I, I benefited great, greatly from it, and hopefully, I can wear a Canadian flag sometime in the near future. Now, obviously, playing at the national level, I think it's easy to say you could be grouped as an elite elite athlete category when you're playing at a level when you've never played before for example your first under 17 tournament in 2009 did you feel you had to change your game at all to get a spot on the team uh, i think uh you know I, I made the team as a, a skilled forward and i think that was my role on the team i wasn't meant to be a big body uh going around hitting guys so i don't think i really had to change my game that much i just had to you know focus on the little details of the game that you know i would uh would allow me to excel at the next level because when I was playing up a year, uh, that first year with the older guys, I mean, uh, you know, they're all high class athletes. Uh, lots of guys are, or a couple of guys are playing in the National Hockey League now, like Tyler Stegen with Boston Bruins. So, uh, you definitely have to, uh, you know, up your game and be ready and mentally prepared. And, um, you know, like I said, it was an amazing experience. Yeah, as you said, you got to play one year as an underage, then you got to play again the following year as a, as the proper age or with your age group, I guess. What did you find was the biggest difference between the 2009 and 2010 tournaments for you personally? I think I took a a bigger leadership role my second year. Uh, We didn't finish as well in the tournament, but yeah, that was definitely the biggest difference. I was uh, an assistant captain there and um, definitely took more part on the the leadership role. Uh, Was relied on more defensively and offensively, and uh, it was just kind of, you know, my my year, but uh, unfortunately, like I said, we we didn't finish that great that year, and uh, would have been nice to get a medal there. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm going to assume you, like every other Canadian, uh, a couple nights ago, watched Team Canada meltdown against Russia. Is it a goal for you to play for Team Canada at the World Junior Tournament next year in Alberta? Yeah, it would be a dream come true, but, you know, that's a long ways away. It's a lot of hard work and determination that, uh, you know, potentially would lead me there. But at the same time, it's an amazing team in Team Canada, and, you know, there's a very select few that are able to crack that roster. But I think every hockey, Canadian hockey player that's playing and, and definitely dreams about it and definitely strives to, uh, you know, make that team. But it's definitely a, a goal of mine. Uh, I, it's obviously going to be very tough, but, you know, hopefully uh, I get the chance to camp next year and maybe, uh, you know, surprise some people. When does the uh, selection process for that begin for next year's World Junior Team? I think it's in, like, uh, mid-December. Uh, Mark Pesic on my team actually got the invite, and he left from our team to Toronto to try out, I think, December 13th-ish, and then uh, the team was made by the 15th or 16th, and then off they went to Buffalo. What do you feel like you have to do personally to earn yourself a spot on next year's team? Well, it's a lot of bounces, and it's a lot of hard work. I mean, uh, you watch Team Canada, it's a lot of gritty play, a lot of hard work, and there's a lot of tough kids that, you know, stay off the team because, you know, they might not work as hard or they might not be as well. Uh, you know, defined in the defensive zone. So it's going to be working on the defensive part of the game and working on all the little details. We are joined today by Michael St. Croix from Edmonton's Oil Kings of the WHL. You are having a ton of success right now in the WHL with 20 points in the month of December, just 11 games. How has your game changed since your first game with the Edmonton Oil Kings? I think it's just focusing, like I said, on the defensive side of the 
the puck. I mean, uh, offense comes from great defensive play, and then, I mean, I'm not the greatest defensive player, but I'm working on it, and, you know, coach is demanding it from me. But also, uh, they give me a lot of uh, responsibility offensively to, you know, chip in, and uh, hopefully I can keep on doing that. Now, you are draft eligible for the NHL this upcoming summer, and your name is appearing all over the top prospects and scouting lists. Have you had any thoughts at all about the NHL draft? Yeah, it's obviously in your mind, uh, but you can't really think about it too much. I mean, uh, the draft's going to come, and it's going to be over so fast, but I'm definitely thinking about it, and I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be amazing if someone calls my name on, uh, you know, in, in Minnesota, but um, I can't think about it right now. i got to think about the Edmonton Oak team. How do you think your game will have to change or adapt as you enter into the pro ranks in the next couple of years? Uh, I'm just going to have to keep on focusing on the details. I mean, uh, right now in the Western League, you can be an offensive threat, and you can, you, you know, make do just being, with, just being talented, but um, the next level, you're going to have to be reliable defensively as well as offensively because, you know, in this day and age, you have to be a two-way player to play. Now, I know you're not going to tell me which team you'd like to go to or which team you'd never want to go to, but Canadian to Canadian, you can answer me this one question, honestly. How nice would it be to play hockey in a city where it doesn't snow? It would be pretty amazing. Uh, here in Edmonton, it's pretty cold as well, just like Winnipeg from where I'm from. So, uh, you know, if it didn't snow, it would definitely be pretty nice. Yeah, it'd be nice to, after a game in January on Saturday night, to head out Sunday on the golf course. Exactly. I think we can all agree that parents are great. However, every kid gets to an age where they're no longer interested in listening to their parents' advice, no matter how right they are. How difficult is it to have your dad, who's an ex-NHL player and coach, and how hard is it for you to tell him that you're not going to take a piece of advice that he's offering up about hockey? <laughs> I think my dad kind of knows everything to do with hockey, so normally I'm willing to listen and you know uh, hear him out because normally he knows what to do and know, knows what it takes to you know be a professional hockey player. Uh, Although sometimes I, you know, think that I'm right and that he's wrong, he knows what it takes and he knows how to get there. So I, uh, I just gotta keep on listening to him, and he's always there for support. Has there ever been a point in time where there was one piece of advice that your dad offered up to you that you're glad you never took? Uh, probably to be a goaltender, maybe when I was growing up. Uh, I don't want to be that kind of weird guy, but no, <laughs> I, no, I he was a goalie actually in the National Hockey League. So. It didn't force me to be a goaltender, but he, uh, you know, he, he definitely let, let me know that the option was there. But uh, you know, I, I decided to be a forward, and I'm happy that I did that. Yeah, for sure. What piece of advice did your dad give you that you are happy you did take, or what is the single best advice that your dad gave you? I think just you know, play the game that you love, and uh, if you love it, you're gonna you know, be as, as good as you possibly can. Yeah, he, uh, he keeps on stressing, you know, uh, the extra trying to be the best you could possibly be doing a little extra that's going to separate you from the rest. And, uh, you know, it's something that I believe deeply in. If you, if you have that step on your opponent, uh, it's insurmountable. So, I mean, in the gym, outside of the rank preparation, if you can, you know, get that one step on the, the opposing player, uh, it's definitely beneficial. Was there ever a piece of advice that he offered you that you thought, no, you know better, and you didn't take it right away, but then uh, maybe perhaps down the road you saw that maybe it was a good piece of advice and you ended up taking it anyway? Yeah, probably uh, just watching the pros, learning from the pros. I mean, it's sometimes when you're younger, you, you know, you think you're you're so good and that you can't, you know, really benefit from watching other players. But uh, I think as I've gotten older and I'm able to, you know, go to Oilers games, just like I was able to go to Moose games before, sometimes I might have, you know, stayed home and hung out with friends. But any opportunity that I get to watch the Oilers now, to watch the professionals, uh, I'm always going to be there because, you know, that's the one way to get better is by watching guys like Taylor Hall and Jordan Everly. And, you know, it's, it's incredible to see what those guys can do. We were joined today by Winnipeg's own Michael St. Croix, the leading goal scorer for the Edmonton Oil Kings of the WHL. Michael, thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. So there you have it, folks. Thanks for listening to Athletes Angle with Ryan Carrett here on 101.5 UMFM.